Hey everyone, my name is Wedge, and Ixalan previews are going buck wild. We've got some of the best cards in the set to talk about, but before all of that, quick reminder, I'm at HasCon all weekend, and so is Iconic Masters. I'll be posting spoilers as they're opened all weekend on our new Instagram. If you want to follow the craziness, just click the first link in the description and give it a follow. And of course, you can expect a flurry of videos on Iconic Masters throughout the weekend. This is what we've been waiting for for some time. Alright, announcement's over, let's talk Ixalan. Conqueror's Galleon is 4 mana for a 210 artifact vehicle with a crew cost of 4. When it attacks, exile it at end of combat, then return it to the battlefield transformed under your control. It transforms into Conqueror's Foothold, which is a land card you can tap to add one colorless to your mana pool. You can also pay 2 mana and tap it to draw a card, then discard a card. You can also pay 4 mana to tap it to draw a card. And you can pay 6 mana to tap it to return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So much text on two sides of a card. This is... I'm honestly not even sure what to say about it. A 210 has a big butt, and it'll turn into a foothold in no time once you get crew 4, of course. But even then, I mean, so many abilities. What does this go in? It's it's so weird. I love it, don't get me wrong, but like, it's it's so weird. Where does this go? Tell me. Primal Amulet is 4 mana for an artifact. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on Primal Amulet. Then if there are 4 more charge counters on it, you may remove those counters and transform it. Before we even look at the other side, spell tribal cards, I'm good to get more of these all day. It is a bit expensive, but has no color identity, which is monumentally important in Commander. And getting those charge counters couldn't be easier. You just have to cast instants and sorceries? Please, I can do that in my sleep. Anyways, let's look at what it transforms into. Primal Wellspring is a land card that you can tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. When that mana is spent to cast an instant or a sorcery spell, copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy- Wait, what? Oh, come on! Spell decks did not need this kind of upgrade, especially in Commander. I know there are some of you who don't like hearing about Commander, but when there's a 4 mana artifact that boosts spells, it goes in Commander. Anyways, Primal Wellspring is the payoff to end all payoffs. Not only is there no downside to either side of the card, but the Wellspring color fixes for you and copies your spells without any additional cost, even for the back of a card that's stupidly powerful, like it's real insane. This may be a colorless card, but it screams as it. You tell me how this works the next time you're up against Mizzix or the Locust God or Talrand or Melek. I'll wait to hear from your burnt corpse. Sentinel Totem is one mana for an artifact and when it enters the battlefield, scry one. You can also tap it and exile it to exile all cards from all graveyards. Ha, <laughs> wrecked, wrecked so hard. Graveyard strategies all over the place, nah. You know what, Ixalan would have been real good a year ago or even six months ago. Imagine this card in a standard with delirium and zombies and emerge strategies, hilarious. Now, this is still effective in standard due to the myriad of graveyard shenanigans still present in the format, but this is clearly better than Crook of Condemnation, which is what we were all using up to this point. So much cheaper all upside. No reason not to run the totem instead. Now if we're talking modern, this has to compete with both Tormod's Crypt and Relic of Progenitus. Scry 1's pretty good, but I don't think it's that good. Still, great bomb for standard sideboards. Thalmatic Compass is 2 mana for an artifact. You may pay 3 and tap it to search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. At the beginning of your end step, if you control 7 or more lands, transform the compass into Spires of Orozka, a land card that you can tap to add 1 colorless mana to your mana pool, and you can also tap it to untap target attacking creature and opponent controls and remove it from combat. Oh hey Maze of Ith. Welcome back to Standard. Now, of course this isn't exactly like Maze of Ith, but that's as close as we're going to get to Maze of Ith. The important thing is how dang expensive this is to get online. 2 mana to play it, and then you gotta wait until you have 7 lands, and the 3 mana activated ability doesn't even get you a land onto the battlefield. It's a grind, let me tell ya. But once you have it out, it is powerful. Of course, we could do what we always do, talk about how this is broken beyond reason in Commander, because it grabs you lands repeatedly, eventually becomes Maze of Ith, then shuns the best creature on the board that ends up attacking you. Yeah, card seems Dees plus. Ixalan's Binding is 4 mana for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent on opponent controls until the binding leaves the battlefield. Your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card. First things first, this is a story spotlight card because guess what? Planeswalkers can't leave Ixalan. Yeah, Jace is stuck there. And that's a whole other thing we're going to get into when we do our lore videos about Ixalan. But yeah, Jace is not having a great time. It's going to be hilarious. Anyways, card quality wise, the binding has a strong ability, but it's in the standard with cast out that's a little more flexible. Granted, if your opponent has no way of getting rid of the binding, they aren't going to be able to cast any copy of the card you exiled. So it's actually a tough choice. Jury is still out for me, but my gut says cast out is a bit better. 
Weakening Sun's Avatar is 5 of anything and 3 white for a 7 7 dinosaur avatar. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, destroy all non dinosaur creatures. Sure, big old dinosaur guy. Let's add more top end to the already top heavy dinosaur tribal strategy. Now I'm really starting to see why this deck needs Pillar of Origins plus more mana ramp than you'd need to cast Gleamax. The avatar doesn't protect itself, sure, but you get so much value simply by getting the thing onto the battlefield to begin with, as long as you cast it from your hand. Sure, 8 mana is a huge investment, but when you get to wipe out your opponent's board and probably grab a removal spell from their hand, could be worse. Not as stable than standard or anything, but solidly powerful. Kite Sail Freebooter is 2 mana for a 1-2 human pirate with flying. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature non-land card from it, exile that card until the Freebooter leaves the battlefield. For all intents and purposes, this is just a better brain maggot, which means it'll be a solidly powerful limited card as far as I'm concerned. Now, you might see that exile ability and think it's standard playable. I don't think it is. The difference between 1 and 2 mana is huge. It's really huge. I don't think this has the chops to be in standard, especially since, you know, Duress is back in standard. Yeah, reprinted fresh for the set. Makes the freebooter look like, well, a freebooter. Duress is the king of discard until all of Watsi goes on another cycle rampage and reprints Thoughtseize in a standard set. Again. Sanctum Seeker is 2 of anything and 2 black for a 3-4 vampire knight. Whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Say hello to the newest addition to any vampire commander deck that you're building. I think it's a bit too pricey if a vampire deck in standard can exist. But in commander, you get to ping each opponent for one life whenever a vampire you control attacks. Obviously meant to be with Edgar Markov. Pretty easy analysis here, solid vamp. Lightning Strike is back, and red players everywhere rejoice because Lightning Strike is an instant and Incendiary Flow isn't. Hashtag analysis. Drover of the Mighty is 2 mana for a 1-1 one, one human druid. It gets plus 2 plus 2 as long as you control a dinosaur. You can also tap it to add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. I'm telling you right now, keep giving me pieces to this dinosaur travel deck. Just keep giving me pieces because I'm going to build this thing. Drover of the Mighty is another much-needed puzzle piece for the strategy. The deck's biggest weakness is that it's slow, but not only will the Drover speed that up, it fixes you another small issue, and it becomes relevant late game when you don't need the mana anymore. The literal second every card in this set is revealed, that dinosaur deck is getting made. We're gonna recreate Jurassic Park, except this time there will be twice as much Jeff Goldblum. What a stud. Huantli Warrior Poet is 3 of anything, 1 red and 1 white for a 3 loyalty legendary planeswalker. You can plus 2 and gain life equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. You can also pay nothing and create a 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature token with trample. And finally, you can minus X and she deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. Creatures dealt damage this way can't block this turn. I am beyond excited about this card. If for no other reason, then wizards decided to finally print some interesting text on a Boros card. Granted, the Johnny Vengeance is pretty cool. The Boros characters we've seen in the past have been pretty generic, you gotta admit. Lots of blind attacking, it gets repetitive. Now with Wally. Her plus two is her least impactful ability, but it gives her five total loyalty the turn she drops, and gives you, hopefully, a decent life total boost. Her zero, though, that's the best part, at least to me. Getting to create a 3 3 with trample each turn, that's powerful. Now, she isn't as cheap as Gideon, who makes two twos, but her three threes, again, come with trample, so she has a way to protect herself in addition to applying pressure on board. This is what I want out of walkers, clear and powerful ways to both defend and attack. Speaking of defending and attacking, the Warrior Poet's last ability, that's a game ender, especially since you can use it right away. It's minus X after all. You can ping a bunch of different creatures for one damage and now they can't block. Or you can be more focused and fireball creatures down left and right. My favorite part about it though, it triggers enrage on your dinosaurs. So flavorful. Someone give me that nine dinosaur travel standard deck now. I'm gonna be all over that. I I need to calm down. Dinosaurs got me all excited up in here. Shapers of Nature is one of anything, one green and one blue for a 3-3 three, three Merfolk Shaman. You can pay 4 mana and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. You can also pay 3 mana and remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from a creature you control to draw a card. Sure, wizards, you know, keep printing staples for a Troxa, or a Zuri, or Animar, or Experiment Kraj, or Voral, or Prime Speaker Zagana. Do you get where I'm coming from now? Shapers of Nature is in a standard set, but by no means is that a standard card, limited and commander for days. We're approaching Iconic Masters previews really quickly, but there's another Ixalan preview video coming after this, so keep your eyes peeled as we catch up on everything that's happened this week. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram as we're going to live post a ton of Iconic Masters spoilers as soon as we open the pack, so baby! And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time!
This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Mixalon's looking pretty swank, I gotta say. Great cards, well-designed, sweet, limited environment. At least it looks that way. If you want to get your Mixalon boxes pre-ordered right now, you can do that by clicking the link on the screen right the second. Boxes for $89 each. That's a great price for the set. If you don't have a local game store or yours is charging way too much, I got you back right here. Just click pre-order and enjoy.